What's up, Journey? How we doing? Guys, I'm just going to call it out. I'm not even a real fan, and I'm exhausted after watching that game. I'm sorry. My heart hurts. thought this was going to be a big party, but it still is going to be a party because we're going to talk about a God that never fails us even when human beings do, right? And I hope you hear our, our heart. We are just so honored to be here. And like I said before, again, just look at us as a normal family. We want to be really conversational with you all tonight. And we're just so honored and humbled um, to be sitting here. And we're so excited that we're able to do this after this morning. And so, you know, a lot of times we, we get to go and we share and we talk about, God, you know, here I am, use me. Right, that moment of surrender that we all really have to get to of saying, okay, God, I'm going to step out of the way, use me. But then a lot of times, I don't know about you all, but I've maybe gotten to those moments in my life, and then I'm like, yeah, use me. Like, yes, Lord, I'm I'm surrendered. And then then everybody leaves, and I look around, and I say, okay, now what? Like, what do I do? And so tonight, we just want to be so practical in just sharing a way, as as Pastor put just so elegantly, about, um, you know, our mission, what God calls us to, and how to do that practically. And what does that look like? It's not a perfect way to do it, but just what we have learned through what we have gone through. And we're going to try to marry the two together tonight as our mission is to go out, but to take that face-to-face that is so beautiful and that we have here out into our own lives. And what does that look like? Because that's really the difference. When people look at you, hopefully, as you're reflecting the Lord, they're like, man, what is th- why, why are they loving me so much? Yeah, what's the matter with them? Why are they joyful? Right? And so we're trying, we're going to talk about these practical ways in order to kind of get to that spot of having that intentional face-to-face time to then to be able to share your story, to share your hope. Our ministry's name is Hope Out Loud, to share the hope out loud in Jesus. And so, um, and again, with that, we have coined it, and the name of this talk is going to be called Leverage Your Life. And so as we talked about this morning and as pastor said, you know, hey, the bear's going to tell you how to share your story. Maybe you're here tonight and you're sitting there and you're thinking, well, you know, I don't, I don't have a story so I can kind of check out tonight. Like I don't have that ooh, ah, wow story. Like we get it, Josh. You guys have that story. You can share that story and people listen just because it's, it's crazy. But maybe you're sitting here feeling like, man, I don't, I don't have that. Well, that's why we are calling this Leverage Your Life, because guess what? You have a life. And what has, you know, made up your life is your gifts, your talents, your abilities, your failures, things that we've gone through, and they're all leveraging points. And so um, we're going to dive into that. We're so excited to be here. And before we start, we're going to ask Jen to to pray us. Yes, I would love to. Let's pray. (laughs) Lord Jesus, good, good Father, we just uplift this time to you now (laughs) and just thank you for this time. I just have to smile because, Lord, I just, I love that word dream, and I believe that you are filling us up just with new dreams, and I just want to pray that over everyone here tonight, that you would just ah, reveal just what that looks like for them and just that this would just be a time of brainstorming and resting in you and just um, a time where we can just uh, find freedom in you and who you are and just what leveraging our life may look like. So uh, help everyone here, Lord, just to know that this is just a time of encouragement and just it's just a time just to um, be filled with you and with the excitement and um, so we welcome your presence here, Lord, and we just I want to pray that you'd be in every detail of tonight, and just thank you again just for um, everyone here in the sanctuary and just for their lives and how you want to use them just to ultimately be world changers for you and just to share the hope uh, that you have given them with the world. So uh, we give you our time again now. It's your name, Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. We asked the question this morning, how many of you are alive? So I'm going to ask that again. How many of you are alive? Awesome. 
Well, then I know 100% that God has work for you to do, for him, for glory, for eternity. I mean, it's amazing the people who came out to talk to us at the table and the stories that people were telling us and how God has already used their story to impact other people's lives. So I'm confident 100% God wants to use each and every person in this sanctuary for his glory, for an eternal purpose. And the first point on the outline, and I know you're going to fill it in as we go along, it's your life is your ministry. It's sort of a perspective change, like, yeah, my life is my ministry. Do you know that God will use everything in your life, in my life? He will use it if we allow him. Think about this. All of your talents, your abilities, the things you love to do, the good things that have happened in your life, the bad things that have happened, Maybe you've been through something very hard. God wants to use that. He wants to use your pain. He wants to use what others have done to you. He will use everything if we allow him. We're going to look at the life of Paul just a little bit. And um, I love that. And it's, it's 2 Corinthians 4 is the chapter we're going to focus on a little bit tonight. But when you think about... Paul, who was Saul, he was just like us. He was a normal guy, educated guy, and he was leveraging everything in his life to stop the spread of the gospel. He was persecuting Christians. He was leveraging it all. And then what happened, Saul was encountered by the risen Savior on the road to Damascus. He met Jesus face to face. And his whole life changed. Then he leveraged everything for the gospel. When you read about everything that Paul went through to spread the gospel, it's just amazing. But think about that for a second. We become a new creation in Christ when we accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior. And 2 Corinthians 4, verse 1, Paul writes these words, Therefore, since through God's mercy we have this ministry. What is that ministry? When we become a Christ follower, the ministry is to share the hope that is in us. Through God's mercy, we have this ministry, and we do not lose heart. I love that. In chapter 4, 2 Corinthians, Paul encourages us twice to not give up. He's like a great coach. He says, keep going. Keep pushing. Don't give up. You have this ministry mm -hmm. to share the hope found in Jesus. So Paul leveraged everything for the gospel. Let me give you a quick definition of leverage, and I think it's on your sheet there. To use something that you already have, your life. Something you already have in order to achieve something new or better. Like Josh was saying, you don't have to get run over by someone who's been drinking and driving to have a story. You have a life, and your life is your ministry where God has placed you. Yeah. Then the next point, number two, if your life is your ministry and you're sitting here thinking, okay, again, that's your whole perspective change. A lot of times you think, oh, well, it's got to be the church. It's got to be, um, you know, something that, that does within these walls, which we're going to get to that as far as bringing back in here. But if your life is your ministry, the next number two, the next point is, um, then what can you leverage? What can you leverage? And Again, for me, and I, maybe you guys can relate to this or not, but, you know, when we hear the word gospel, um, it could be kind of scary, right? We're like, oh, we got to go, you know, share the gospel. Like, how do I even get to that spot? Do I just go run out and, and start sharing it on the street? You can. But a lot of us don't go out and, and necessarily do that, right? Or we're necessarily, you know, we're kind of scared to get to that spot. And so in thinking of that, just trying to bring it down practically, if your life is your ministry, just thinking, okay, what 
can I practically leverage? What is something that I already do, that I already love to do, just so it can be my foot in the door to start having that face-to-face -face relationship with the people that God has placed in your life? I don't think it's by accident you are where you are placed today, where your feet are, in your works places, you know, wherever you go and shop. And in thinking, you know, okay, in those mundane, what seems maybe mundane to us from Monday through Friday, what a part of those days could we leverage, again, as leveraging points to start creating that face-to-face -face intentional relationship with those around you? And uh, there's some examples from the Bible here on the, on the screen. The next one. Yep. Um, so you see here, these things are normal. Uh, that you would think, oh, I, I can't use that necessarily for the gospel. You have Peter, who used his boat. You have Lydia. You guys can look this up later. We don't have time to go through all of it. But Lydia, she used her house. Dorcas, she used her ability to sew. Um, just normal things, right? And then other things, as you think, as you can maybe relate to that. Maybe you're in here and, and you love sports. Well, what, the, what would that look like if you love sports? Maybe you think you were... A hot shot, you know, sport player back in the day, you know what you're talking about, right? Well, get out there and use that passion. Find a kid that you know doesn't know the Lord. Start pouring into his life. Start giving him lessons and do it for free with nothing in return, right? Other examples, maybe you like to hunt. Any hunters in here? Am I by myself? No hunters? <laughs> Man, all right, all right, cool. We'll have to talk after. I was about to say, Josh. so I know... <laughs> Josh is a hunter wannabe. <laughs> no, I'm a hunter wannabe. I love to hunt back, back home. But maybe you love to hunt, and you're passionate for hunting. So here you are maybe scared at first to share maybe your faith, but I know you love hunting, and you can't tell me that you can't extend an invite to that coworker that you know who maybe doesn't know Jesus to come hunt with you. Again, just your foot in the door. Ladies, if you love to cook, Maybe it's finding younger girls that you can teach how to cook. Bring them over to your house. Start loving on them. Start teaching them a skill. And again, if, if something, you know, those are all talents, gifts. Maybe there's something hard that you really went through. That, um, and this is harder for us maybe to open up, but maybe it's something that you know, I don't want anybody else to have to, to go through this like I did. So maybe it's finding that person that's 10 years earlier you're 10 years later down the road than them, and they're about to go through maybe an addiction, maybe something that you walk through. And you're going to take that time to say, hey, let's, maybe their, your entry point is, let's go to coffee. I, I want to I really start talking to you about this and, and start creating that relationship. Maybe it's as simple as opening up your home, asking your neighbor over for dinner. So number two, as you sit there, as, as your life is your ministry, and that might be a perspective change for you, just thinking, okay, if that's the case, then what can I leverage? What do I already have? Which is what leverage is, something that you already have to make something new. It can even be maybe you have a yard and you want to have a bonfire. And um, what I love, too, is you can leverage your life individually or you can leverage your life as a family you may want to invite some neighbors over to the bonfire and um, you're just starting to love on them. And one thing Josh has taught me, he will often take people out and buy their breakfast, buy their coffee. He will expect nothing in return. And in today's culture, people don't know what to do with that. You mean you're going to just love on me and, and buy me lunch, buy me breakfast with, with expecting nothing in return. Um, you know, so often we get excited. Like right now, you're probably thinking of things in your mind that you have that you could leverage. Um, and then what happens is we get all excited, and then as we go out, you know, in a day or two, you'll start to have these excuses come in your mind. And the excuses might be things like, well, I'm not good enough to do that, or I'm too busy. That's one of mine that I have all the time. Um, or I could lose my job. You know, if I share Christ with somebody at work, I could lose a friend. Um, what are people going to think? Are they going to think I'm crazy? Or what if I fail? Um, one girl said to me, um, I don't want to share the gospel because what if I do it wrong and I ruin their one chance to come to Jesus? 
And I looked at her and I said, that is such a lie from Satan. You can't ruin somebody's chance. And nothing that you say can change a life. It's only the power of the Holy Spirit that can change a life. And all of us can pray and ask the Holy Spirit to open their hearts and their minds to receive truth. And so what, what just dawned on me the other day is these excuses, we think they're just little excuses. They are lies from the enemy. And as soon as I start agreeing with that lie and that excuse, I am giving Satan a foothold into my life. And I don't even realize it. It's disguised as an excuse, but it's a lie from Satan. And, um, you know, we have a real enemy. It's, it's not your husband. It's not your wife. It's not your teenagers. It's not that neighbor that drives you crazy. It is Satan. And he's real. And um, he's coming after you, especially when you're going to do something that matters for eternity. You know, we get so excited just like today in the second service when the sound goes out because when people might accept Christ, of course, Satan's going to try everything to distract. Uh, Jen woke up this morning and she had a terrible headache and um, we just had all kinds of things going wrong. And I thought, oh, God, you're going to do something great today. And I love how Jen has taught us that. But you can get excited. If you're, if you're making a difference in someone's life and you're intending on sharing the gospel with them, it's going to be hard. You're going to have to push through, and you can get excited about that. Um, once you're a believer, Satan cannot have you. You are God's child forever. You are sealed forever. But Satan's goal is to keep you so trapped. Jen likes to call it trapped. So trapped in that inner turmoil. Um, where you're kind of um, just with the lies. His number one weapon is lies. And John 8, 44, he, the devil, was a murderer from the beginning, not holding to the truth, for there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks his native language, for he is a liar and the father of lies. If Satan says you're not something, like you're not smart enough, you're not loved, you're not forgiven, you're not seen, you're not a good provider, protector, you are. Because Satan comes to kill, steal, and destroy. And he can't steal something that you don't already have. And so you can literally, I love how Jen does it, she will just call it out and say, um, what do you love to say, Satan? I love to say, Satan, you are under my feet. And the only power that you have over me is the power that I give you by the lies I choose to believe. And I say, no, I'm believing God. I'm believing truth. That statement is a game changer because so often as believers, we feel like Satan is more powerful than us. But you have the Holy Spirit, God himself, living in you as a child of God. And you have power over Satan in Jesus' name. And you can claim it out loud. We do it every day. Claim it out loud. Claim truth out loud. Um, some ways that we get Satan to flee when you feel like he's coming after you this morning. Jen had that headache and uh, she forgot some of her makeup and we just had one problem after another. And then she said, oh, God's bringing a song to my mind. Do you remember what the song was? Yes, uh, it was I Raise a Hallelujah in the presence of my enemies. <laughs> Try to say the words. Listen to these words the Holy Spirit brought to her mind. I raise a hallelujah because heaven's come to fight for me. And then um, I'm going to sing in the middle of the storm, louder and louder. You're going to hear my praises roar. I mean, think about that. Jen with a brain injury could not think that up. And in the middle of, of all that was going on, God, the Holy Spirit gives her this song. And so um, I just want to encourage you when you get really down. For me, it happens in the middle of the night. Does that happen to anybody else? Um, I know women can probably relate to that. You start to worry, and you worry about all these things for your kids, your family. And um, the only way that I can go back to sleep is if I start singing a praise song. And it's not a fancy praise song. A lot of times it's a song I learned as a child, uh, like and my God is so big, so strong and so mighty. There's nothing my God cannot do. 
um, when Jen was in the hospital, the only song I could think of was Jesus Loves Me. And I would sing it to Jen over and over and over again. It was the only song I could think of. And when you sing, it carries you and Satan will flee because Satan wants the praise. And when you praise God, he flees. The second way to get him to flee is to quote scripture out loud, quote truth out loud. And um, Jen had huge anxiety for a long time. She couldn't go in a room full of people. And what would we quote out loud? The Lord has not given me a spirit of fear, but of love, power, and a sound mind. We would quote that to go into a doctor's office, <laughs> to go anywhere yeah and we learned at the brain doctor your brain believes what you speak out loud and that's why it's so important to speak god's word out loud it's because it's truth and so when jen wakes up in the morning she'll say i'm gonna have a great day because she's telling herself how to believe think about it if you say i'm gonna have an awful day you probably will right because you're looking for things to agree with that but if you speak truth, speak positive, Jen turns everything into positive. She flip calls flop. it a, what do you call it? I, uh, flip flop, like flip flopping yeah. the negative. Yeah. Into so positive. when she can't remember where she's going, what will you say? Oh, Jen, you are so smart. She'll say, Jen, you're so smart. And if she feels ugly, what do you say? I can't be ugly. God threw out the mold. <laughs> yes. She'll say, I'm one of a kind. One of a kind, yes. God threw out the mold when he made me. And so when Satan comes after you, just flip-flop it and speak truth out loud to yourself. Satan's fingerprints are shame, confusion, half-truths. He gets us to doubt God's love for us. If you feel shame, that is not God. God convicts our hearts so he can forgive us and free us. Satan is the one that condemns us over and over again. And he's going to make you feel unworthy to share the gospel we don't have to be worthy. Jesus is worthy. And the blood of Jesus covers us. It's the great exchange, all of my sin in exchange for all of his righteousness. And our feelings are real, but they're not always true. We have to run to God's word for truth. You may feel unloved, but when you run to God's word, John 8, Romans 8 says, nothing can separate me from the love of God. You may feel today like you're all alone, but you run to God's word. Joshua 1, 9 says, do not be afraid, for the Lord your God is with you. You are never alone. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. And so we have to speak God's word out loud. It's our offense and it's our defense. Sometimes we forget that God's word is our defense. And um, Josh hates this story, but when... Uh, Pastor Christian, you'll like this. When he was in ninth grade, he was on the varsity football team, and um, he jumps up and intercepts the ball, and the guy pulls his helmet off, and he doesn't realize it because of the adrenaline rush, and he's running down that field with no helmet on. And Jen is screaming, stop the game. We're screaming, stop the game. Um, and finally, they do stop the game. But here's the point. Josh was running down that field with no helmet on, no protection. Protection. And we often are running down the field of life, and we haven't even read God's word that day. Our, our helmet's not on. Our protection's not on. We're not ready for the day. And so God's word is your protection, and it's also your offense where you just quote it out loud to get Satan to flee. That's exactly what Jesus did when he was tempted. The fourth thing we wanted to talk about is you have a secret weapon, and that is to tap into the power of the Holy Spirit. And Jen, what's your verse you love about that? Oh, yes. I love Acts 1, 8. It says, and you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you shall be my witnesses in Judea and Samaria and to the uttermost parts of the earth. I love that verse. It just, yeah. It's, it's sort awesome. of like, I like to think of a lamp plugged into the electricity and if we're not plugged in to the Holy Spirit, that's where the power is. The power our source. light's not on. He's our power source. We've got to plug into him. And, <clears throat> you know, before Jesus ascended into heaven, he said to the disciples, it's better for you if I go. And what is better than Jesus himself right there in human form? The power of the Holy Spirit, the comforter, 
our guide, our counselor living inside of us. And so as you go out to make relationships and to share Christ, you've got to tap into your power source. You've got to pray and ask the Holy Spirit to open their hearts and minds to truth. And Jen, tell them what you do every morning to tap in. When I get up out of bed, I, uh, I land immediately on my knees and I surrender my day to the Lord. And I just, I, I just ask the Lord just to fill me with his strength and just I tell the Lord I don't want to miss one plan that you have for me. And just I ask him just to be my guide. And I just, I tell him I'm so excited. Yeah. 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 The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, self-control. It's all the things we're looking for. We're looking for love. We're looking for joy. And it lives in us. And so we just have to tap into it. That's what Jen says to people. Just tap into it. It <laughs> The Holy Spirit is in you. That's right. Jen really does embody that. Um, it's amazing. She's taught us so much in that area. So when you guys think, one, your life is your ministry. Two, what can you leverage? Three, mom hit on it. Why, you know, why don't we do that? Why don't we then leverage our lives? And that's so huge. I want you guys to understand that, you know, and three and four is so big because on our own strength, we are outmatched by our enemy. Satan is powerful, and on our own, we can't win. But if we can tap, and once we tap into the power of the Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name, he has no power in your life, and you can defeat his lies. So for me, that was life-changing for me, that that is how Satan operates, is his lies that are in our lives. And so um, we have to get those out. We have to tap into the power of the Holy Spirit. We have to land on our knees in the morning to then go out. And I want to circle back. So as you think about what can you leverage, and as that is an entry point, any, you know, whatever God is bringing to your mind is an entry point to, to dive in as your foot in the door, as I said before, to, to you know, really enter into what is number five. And that is creating and having intentional relationships. As Pastor said before, that face to face. Guys, what you have here, I want to say, your, your fan, this is a, a testament to you guys. Your guys' church family is awesome. We're just so, just, it's just been so just filling for us to talk to you guys, to be around you guys. What you have is special. What we have in Jesus is special. It's too good to keep here. And that's the point. And so as you leverage, as you maybe something that is, is easy for us to do, our passion, our talent, you know, opening up your home, that may be kind of hard with a bunch of stuff, but you know, like. <laughs> COVID. <laughs> yeah, with COVID and everything, unspoken. Um, but you know, when you're talking, okay, I can invite him to go to a ball game and sit with him. But then it's a, then it's a challenge to really start diving into that person's life. Because when you think about it, the people that have the most impact on your life, if you can really sit back and think about it, they were there for you. They walked through this life with you. They were there for you in the good days and the bad days. They were intentional. It was almost intentional means done deliberately or done by design. The person that you're going to walk through life with, it's not like they're your project. right? We're not saying that. We're saying genuinely love them. Genuinely be there for them. You know, as you've created that relationship, you know, invite them over to dinner. Take their kids, watch them, have them go on a date. Anything and everything to begin to earn their trust and begin to earn the right to be heard in their lives. Which then brings us to number six. As we have that intentional relationship and as we're diving into their life, we have to get to that spot to share our hope out loud. And again, we, I want you guys, for me, it's another perspective change of when we say gospel, that may be like, ooh, that's, that's a lot. Guys, the gospel is hope. 
People are dying for hope. The cab driver story that we shared this morning, they're dying for hope. They're filling their lives with the things of the world that we know provide them no hope. So viewing of saying, okay, I'm just going to give them the hope that I have. And when we get the word from is in 1 Peter 3.15, which says, But in your hearts revere Christ as Lord. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you, to give the reason for the hope that you have, but do this with gentleness and respect. So as you view that they need hope, and maybe um, at first you're like, okay, I, I don't feel like I have all the points of the gospel down, which is going to be, I'm going to talk about in a little bit. Maybe you can just take this thing out of it and say, hey, I don't know everything. I don't claim to know everything. I'm in this process with Jesus um, in my own life. But let me tell you what he has done. Let me give you the hope of what he's done in my life. You know, nobody's going to say, oh, no, I, you know, you're, that's not true. Your own story, like we say, your own story is personal to you. If you take it to the spot of just saying, hey, let me just share you why I have this hope and what God has done. All I know is, man, this is how I lived, and now this is how God has transformed me. I love the story of the blind man when they're questioning him. And in his joy and in, his, in that moment, he's like looking at the Pharisees like, hey, y'all people are crazy. I don't know what you're talking about, but what I do know is that I was blind and now I see. And so maybe that will be able to help you as you get in these intentional relationships just to say, even just having those disarming phrases of, hey, I don't know it all, but let me share you this hope. And then I also challenge you that as believers, we need to know and how to bring them to that decision. We do need to know the gospel, that we are sinful, that our sin has separated us from a holy God, but that God and his love did not leave us in our sin, but sent his son. He moved first and sent his son to die for our sin and to pay our penalty so that if we believe in him and as, as we repent from our sin, recognize our sin and repent, and as we commit our lives to the Lord, believe in who he was, who he said he was, and by faith, saying, I choose to follow you, that you will be saved. And so tonight, however you want to, to navigate it, I challenge you to, to really commit to knowing the gospel when you get to that spot. And the most important point of sharing your hope out loud, because again, we're all humans. But we, can't, we can't change that person. Only God can. So before you go, and through this all, ask the Holy Spirit to go before you. Ask the Holy Spirit and say, Holy Spirit, I can't do this. Would you bring this up? Would you be able to bring up a spot where I can lean in and share what you've done in my heart? And I don't know, like there's times when I'm like, hey, I'm, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. And then you go and I didn't pray. And man, it just sucks. I'm just going to be honest, right? <laughs> You're like, oh, man. But it, when you step out of the way and humble yourself and ask God to go before you, it's amazing what he does. That's true. That's awesome. The final point when you go out to leverage your life for eternity, it's keeping an eternal perspective. Always keeping an eternal perspective. And I would encourage you to read 2 Corinthians 4, the whole chapter. And at the end of that chapter, verses 16 through 18, the Apostle Paul says again, Therefore, we do not lose heart. Though outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day. You know, this body of ours, it wastes away. But we have a hope inside of us. For our light and momentary troubles, he knew everyone's going to go through things in this life. We're all going to experience hard things, painful things. But they are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all, all of the things we go through. Verse 18, and I love this. So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen. For what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. I don't think we're ever going to know the full scope of what God's doing until we get to heaven. This is hard for me. 
I'm going to be honest. I, I do believe Jesus is going to walk up the gen in heaven. And a lot of you, he's going to put his arm around you. And he's going to say, well done. Well done. You see that person? You see that person? It's because you were faithful. When Jen came home from the hospital, they actually kicked her out nine weeks early. Insurance did, and we were still in wheelchairs, and it was a mess. I'm just going to be honest with you. It was a total mess. And we'd try to get around Jen's bed, and we'd pray over her as a family. We'd get our Linda and I in wheelchairs, and Josh is pushing us around. And we'd pray for healing for Jen. God, would you please, there's, we had so many issues. And I will never forget when Jen prayed this one prayer, and she opened her mouth, and she said, <clears throat> Lord, have I met all your expectations today? Have I fulfilled all the plans you had for me to do today? There was my 15-year-old little girl, our 15-year-old little girl, teaching us to live life with an eternal perspective. Like we said this morning, this isn't our home. This isn't it. If you ask God to bring people into your life so you can leverage your life for eternity, he will do it. I'm going to ask that you bow your heads. Just one moment here. And I want you to pray to the Holy Spirit. Right now in your seat, Holy Spirit, give me one person that I can leverage my life. Ask him to give you that person, just one tonight. And also ask him, Holy Spirit, what can I leverage in my life? We want you to walk out of this room tonight with a name of a person and something you can leverage. This group right here can change Lee's Summit. This group right here can change Kansas City. You can change the world. One person at a time. Just ask the Holy Spirit right now. Father God, thank you for meeting with us here tonight. We bow humbly and graciously before you. God, I thank you for this place. I thank you for these people. God, I thank you that your love and your joy is so evident here. It overflows, God. And that's not a testament to anything that these people have done, but that they have stepped out of the way and that they are constantly filling up with you. And God, I pray that you would just continue to fill their hearts so much that it just overflows where you have placed them Monday through Friday. God, I just pray that right now that, that you would empower all of us here to leverage our lives for eternity, that you would just 
um, be able to guide us to maybe that one person that you have in our life to begin to leverage something to start an intentional relationship with them to ultimately share the hope that we have in you. God, thank you, thank you for not leaving us in our sin. Thank you that while we were dead, you moved first. And in light of that, God, since you've given us everything, you owe us nothing else. In light of that, God, we are called to then go out and to give everything to you. Continue to teach that to us. Continue to remind us of your truth. Help us to be able to fight the enemy. Holy Spirit, please help us to break those lies in our lives that we can live in your freedom. God, we thank you. I just ask for a blessing over just this church as they go out to make an impact, guide their steps, go before them, open up doors that only you can, Father God. Continue to guide us as we have breath in our lungs. In Jesus' name, amen.